Today's discussion will be presented in two sections since we are recording it for a radio broadcast on Federal News Radio 1500 AM. You're welcome to post questions and comments during the session, and we'll try to answer them online. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Jason Miller, executive editor at Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. Welcome to the show today. My guest is Paul Battaglia, the vice president of federal sales for BlackBerry. Welcome, Paul. Jason, good afternoon. Good to be with you. Our conversation today will focus on mobile revolution, and what a great time to talk about this growing influence and use of these devices. And of course, we have to talk about how best to secure them. The use of mobile technologies and evolution of the Internet of Things, or IoT, is reshaping the way the government executes on its mission. From smartphones to tablets to letting employees work from anywhere at any time, this wide adoption of Wi-Fi, even in places like the Pentagon have Wi-Fi now. I know our reporter from uh, our DOD reporter is so very excited that there's Wi-Fi at the Pentagon, but this all presents major challenges, spe specifically around cybersecurity. And, you know, how can agencies secure the ever-growing number of devices? Among the most startling findings of a new Homeland Security Department report on uh, mobile devices and security around them, it, this comes from a March report, and it shows that they, these mobile devices have become an avenue to attack back-end computer systems containing the data of millions of Americans, sensitive information around federal government functions. Now, DHS made 10 recommendations ranging from... Um, how agencies adopt a framework for mobile device security based on existing standards and best practices to Congress, to the Office of Management and Budget, enhancing the metrics of the Federal Information Security Modernization Act, FISMA, to focus more on securing mobile devices, applications, and network infrastructure. The security of mobile devices becomes even more important when you consider the evolution that offers you know, a path to more productivity, better communications, better citizen services. So this whole idea of modernizing government. So with that context in place, let's begin our conversation. Once again, my guest is Paul Battaglia, the Vice President of Federal Sales for BlackBerry. So Paul, what's interesting about this, and, and I was just at a recent event where they talked about IoT, Internet of Things, they talked about cybersecurity, and all these things that are happening, the state of cybersecurity today is so much different than it was you know, a month ago, six months ago, five years ago. Just give me your perspective on that, the state of cybersecurity. Well, Jason, uh, yes, it's unprecedented, isn't it? Uh, everything we seem to touch now is um, is connected. And uh, Thomas Friedman once coined the phrase, the world is flat, alluding to the connected world. It's also a dangerous world. And um, it's now estimated that uh, over 120 countries, more than half the countries on the planet now, are developing offensive cyber uh, attack capabilities, uh, which is now viewed as the fifth element of warfare behind space, uh, air, sea, and land. And so no chain is any stronger than its weakest link. And the government is big and acquisitions are generally slow. Um, and the tools used in cybersecurity change so often that it's a major challenge for our CIOs and CSOs. And um, I'll tell you, those guys do a great job, uh, but their job is tougher than ever. ever. I mean, just ever. Uh, they, they can't talk about their successes. They fight a war that's 24 hours a day. Uh, every day of the year, but one single slip uh, gets them either news on the front page or even worse yet, a catastrophic creates a catastrophic risk for the country. And we know that everybody from rogue nations to terrorist organizations to organized crime are trying to get into those networks, and those networks continue to proliferate with things that they have to manage. And um, it's a really uh, daunting task. I think you, you present it well that it's not just a, well, let's let's create the perimeter, let's protect the, the put, you know, put the moat around the castle. That idea, that concept of, of your perimeter and your network defense has changed so much. And, and because of mobile phones and tablets and the like, the, the, the endpoint mm -hmm. security and, and what you hear about securing at the data layer has been so much more. I mean, is that the biggest change you've seen, you know, over the last three, five, seven years? Yeah, I think so. Uh you know, if you think about it, we have, it started off with mobile phones being the big challenge. Um, the proliferation of phones, the mobile workforce, um, and the mobile phone, the smartphone being the, uh, the communication device of choice, replacing laptops largely. And that became a, a security issue. Even the, the DHS, DHS report you just cited talked about how the smartphone uh, introduced new elements of risk to the equation. They can get malware on them just like a laptop can, but they have other capabilities that make them even more risky. There are 5 million applications you can download on a, on a phone. God knows 
what is in those. Um, plus, they have sensor design, uh, sensors in them, uh, so GPS devices. Uh, and they're consumer, a lot of them are consumer grade, meaning that they're not, security is not a major factor. So for a government agency to say, oh, let's buy an I, a phone of, of certain you know, maker, whether it's a BlackBerry phone or whomever, that's made for me and you as the consumer, not necessarily the government employee who has these security challenges. Sure. And let's face it, things like text messaging are ubiquitous. But SMS texts are, uh, in and of themselves, not encrypted, right? So whether you're a, a hospital employee exchanging patient information through a text with a doctor or a medical provider uh, or someone on the front lines of law enforcement or in our intelligence agencies, uh, we have to be very, very careful that those things don't cause leakage in the network uh, and create vulnerability for us. That's a great segue to, to this t discussion mm -hmm. about the state of federal cybersecurity, but the challenges of this mobile government, the use of Internet of Things, IoT, is mm -hmm. growing. You talked about it earlier a little bit. Everything from your cars mm -hmm. to sensors that are out there to help people meet mission to you know toaster ovens and refrigerators. Talk about this idea of the challenges, the security challenges for the, the modernizing mobile government. Well, first and foremost, we have so many different systems that are... Uh, government employees have to operate uh, to keep current. It's uh, virtually impossible to keep current on all of them. Think of all the mo hundreds of thousands of mobile phones uh, that are out there in the government, and all of them have to be brought up to security levels, the latest uh, operating systems with security embedded in those. Then you start adding devices that are inherently unsecure. Um, again, uh, let's take the example of a, an automobile. Uh, cars are going to be the next new connected device. Uh, out there, government automobiles, government uh, military automobiles, those are going to present uh, risk and they're going to need to be covered. But central to all this is the fact that management of all these devices becomes overwhelming. And what we need to do is get to more centralized management uh, so that we can do away with all these multiple systems trying to manage things. Uh, that is the firm, foremost goal, find a unified system on a single pane of glass that can get us to uh, good management. Here's the here's the easy the softball question for you. Does one exist? Ah, <laughs> well, they do exist, and I happen <laughs> to know one very well. There you go. <laughs> I, I kind of thought that. Generally speaking, what are you seeing from your government clients? Are they are they asking for that single pane of glass? Because uh, you see that with other cybersecurity efforts around dashboards, as an example. Every CIO and CISO that we meet is looking for that single pane of glass because on the network, usually there are heterogeneous devices. You're going to have iPhones. You're going to have Androids. You'll have BlackBerry phones. Uh, you'll have, again, uh, all kinds of wearables that are, that are on the network. How do I centrally see and manage those and create an environment where I, I know that not one of those devices is going to create a uh, back-channel tunnel into my network? Um, we are doing that today. Uh, we are doing that today. We can unify management of iOS with Android, BlackBerry, Windows, and a host of other operating systems. You, you bring up an interesting point about that single pane of glass and understanding where your risks are. There's been plenty of opportunities already, even though this idea of IoT is so new, there's been plenty of opportunities for IoT to cause challenges or even even problems with for, for, for large organizations. Give me, give me an example of where, what you've seen over the last you know, few years. Well, uh, certainly the breaches that have been uh, reported out there are, are headline news. Uh, certainly here in the government, uh, we all know about the, the OPM breach, and we've heard about others at VA and Postal Service and the Pentagon even, and of course even in the intelligence community. And our, our people are doing the best they can with the tools they have. But, you know, if you even look out to industry here, industry's having the same level of difficulty. Um, uh, if you look at the most recent hacks in Fortune 500 companies that cr suffer great financial losses, but in, in two cases, one tunneled in through the company's air conditioning system, which was connected to the Internet, and the other one got in through the point of sale system. Um, the point here being that no matter where you are, your endpoints, all those things in the network that uh, are connected together and communicate are sources of vulnerability. And I think people lose sight of that. And I think it's part of the education of understanding that risk management piece that, yeah, you can put on 
you can have your refrigerator connected to the internet. That's a great right. thing. And you can re- order through Amazon or Peapod or whoever the milk when you get down low. But that also becomes not a risk that somebody now orders you 400 gallons of milk and it's on your credit card. And it becomes a hassle. Yeah. Is, is that getting, is that a key piece to understanding as agencies, as organizations modernize uh, their, their, their services that they have to understand that, that risk piece? Yeah, I think so. Uh, everything's at risk. Let's face it. Um, uh, f- as you said, phones are more consumer grade than uh, military grade, and uh, all- none of these devices are military grade. A refrigerator and the network uh, at a VA hospital that's um, uh, that's storing blood, for example, is is not military grade. We've had a situation where ethical hackers have been able to uh, hack into a VA hospital and change the medicinal dosage in an IV of a patient. Um, this is how profound. The problem becomes. Imagine laying in your bed and uh, someone remotely is operating your IV um, for medicinal purposes. This creates uh, a whole set of different things outside of cyber warfare with rogue nations. So, as we talk about the modernization, what should people keep in mind as, as as agencies look to modernize and bring in these mobile capabilities, these Internet of Things capabilities? What are some of the things that they sh- that, that you guys are seeing that you you know as you're helping your clients understand these challenges? Well, I think that, again, we talk about all the risks involved here, Jason, but there's unprecedented opportunity here. As things are moving out to the edge of the network, um, the use cases are becoming very effective and very profound. Uh, As an example, in law enforcement, um, uh, we have products now today that uh, one of my people actually refers to as Amber Alerts for the Enterprise a company called Ad Hoc, where 80% of the Pentagon uses this. And if you go back to 2013, to the awful situation we had at the Washington Navy Yard, uh, you know, if, you're in, if you were in one of the buildings down there, chances are you were under your desk wondering what to do next. But through this particular system, uh, you were getting constant communication from law enforcement and first responders on whether to shelter in place or whether to go out the back door. Uh, this was used also in the San Bernardino terrorist attacks two years ago, uh, where it was unprecedented, but for the first time ever, a general bl- broadcast was sent out to everyone in the vicinity uh, advising them of the situation and to shelter in place. Uh, we had another similar situation at uh, on the campus of UCLA where students were notified um, that they needed to shelter in place, that there was an active shooter on campus. So this pro- provides... Um, uh, things that we've never had before, um, but we need to manage those. One of the things that this understanding of IoT and this understanding, as you said, of, of this challenge is agencies are looking to modernize. Agencies, we, we hear about this from the White House, we hear about this from Congress, and the mobile services, the access to these apps are, are, are as you said, both a security issue, but also a great opportunity. Is there a balance? Are you seeing agencies trying to find the balance so far? Well, Jason, the, there is a very obvious, very delicate balance between the benefits and the risks. We talk about the benefit of extending the networks out to things like law enforcement, enabling citizen services. Um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about even things like port security here. But uh, the fact of the matter is all these devices are small and they're portable. And let's, t- let's take a low-risk uh, example, or excuse me, a, a, a low-tech example uh, that's probably high-risk, and that is... Um, let's talk about someone leaving a smartphone or a tablet um, left on an airplane in a foreign country. I know I've left them in cabs and in restaurants, every, everywhere else. And that device happens to have sensitive government data, which presents a real challenge for the CISO and the CIO. Uh, the best solution for that is what's known as a container that isolates the government data from the other on the mobile device. And it effectively puts a moat around the government portion of the information. Uh, on the device. The container now has policies in it that control the di- dissemination of the sensitive data. Um, that could, in- I don't know, that could include uh, more authentication uh, to get into it, another separate password to get into it, um, or the fact that it just can't be seen uh, unless there's a biometric entry. And even some read versus write, correct? Like you can read it, but you can't make changes, correct. or you can read it and make changes. I mean, that's, a, that's another key piece to that that's right. Well, and you know, as an adjunct to this, the you know the use of an 
encryption built into these uh, containers um, really ensures that the data can't be accessed from outside the container. That's the key here, right? So that um, these are getting widely used now. Uh, a container uh, technique and um, strategy is absolutely vital to uh, protecting national secrets. Most container products use the advanced encryption standard, which is mandated uh, in the federal government. But um, these solutions also allow the administrators to remove, when they get the phone back, if it's government issued, to remove only the container portion um, uh, stored within, within the container itself. Um, it also, per, uh, you know, as kind of the example was leading, it also protects from data leakage. Um, someone accidentally sets, sends something uh, across the network that they shouldn't to someone. I'm sure this happens all the time, too, with so much uh, traffic going in and out. And so the containerization allows the organization to retrain, uh, maintain control over that data um, and strictly limiting the flow of information into places where it should be allowed. I think the example you, you give in terms of losing your cell phone, data leakage are great examples. And We've all done it, so don't, don't feel bad. <laughs> Paul, Paul, let's take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we can talk a little bit more. You're listening to the discussion Innovation in Government, sponsored by Kerasoft on federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM. <laughs> 